Hello. Hello there. And welcome to tonight's episode of The Plight of Princes. It has been a considerable period of time. <laughs> and as a result, just a quick recap. Yes, please. The party please. is traveling. Here the party note taker beg for a recap. No, when you're like, so. do I remember? <laughs> Fuck, who knows? So, where we last left off, the party is currently traveling around Faerun, finding these artifacts called the Spires of Lakith, uh, spires which had been left by the lich-like uh, leader of the Githyanki when they assaulted the city of Neverwinter and flung them across Faerun as a whole. They siphon off specific areas of magic, which the one they are currently working on being the one of Conjuration. Abjuration is another one which has been found, but may or may not have been disposed of quite yet. But they are currently in a location looking for the one of Abjuration. Um, they believe and have good authority through scrying that it is currently in the possession of Old Gnarlbone, a ancient green dragon who populates the forests of most of central Faerun, but is currently located in High Forest. The Let's just see if I can get up this show to the party, and I'm hoping you guys get a bigger element of her. If not, I apologize. Still little, I'm afraid. Still small. I know what I'll do. If you open it in a new tab, it's very slightly bigger. Mm. Oh, slightly. Slightly bigger, yes. So while I describe, the party has been traveling through has gotten assistance from multiple people in regards to where they might need to go, what they might need to look at, and even encountered somebody who was supposedly from the Shadowfeld, um, or something Shadowfeld adjacent, and they aid of this person from a young green dragon who was attacking them. Uh, this person gave them a item which allowed them to more or less find where they needed to go and used it to arrive in what looked like a pseudo field of swamp outside of this um, with a single person next to a large bell or a large gong and they approach this person who seemed to be some sort of servant and that person has guided them down into the depths of this dragon's lair the session ended with the dragon manifesting through mist and through a collection of tropical exotic birds and other sorts until they have manifested out their skin this dark red bark like color with green accenting across the entire thing as well as a mane um a crest and almost a crown of feathers which is not of a crown itself but they are crowned through feathers that they have naturally themselves they have manifested in the room and I believe the last thing they were saying is, let's talk. So, one moment, folks, as I get on the music. Do, 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 do. Off table. What hmm. was our plan coming in here? <laughs> Be polite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, good. Uh, make a deal to get the spire without yeah. fighting. Yeah, because 
They instigated us. <laughs> we are here at their request. <laughs> let them talk and then... Yeah, so we're just going to let, let them lead the we'll conversation. Leave us, there we, we go. stupid enough to say, yes, we'll come. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Now we can see that image. Yeah. And from where you are, I will uh, reiterate that you are on a balcony that leans into essentially a massive underground amphitheater following down from a staircase of wood, stone, earth, and vines, which created out of this small portion of swamp. You then followed the butler through a stream of multitude different turns of lefts and rights and rights and left until you found yourself there and you were once again informed by this butler to not provoke a response that you are here as a guest and should be treated as such they arrive out and those of you who are there on the day of the attack of neverwind have seen an ancient dragon before and it was probably the only one to my understanding that you've ever seen this party which was cloth cloth was by definition, a mountain of a dragon. Enormous. And a plaque. Uh, you remember it as well, his size comes to mind because you remember the podium, the dais that has been raised up in the graveyard for him. And it is titanic. With notes of who killed him being brother, betrayer, rider, friend, traitor, always being etched out as if somebody were on a typewriter or on a keyboard, writing and then deleting, writing and then deleting. As if fate itself or reality itself could not decide. This figure, while he was a mountain, this is a stream of a dragon. They are lithe and thin, spindly and long to the point where there's probably 20 to 30 feet easily between where the joints of their forearms and their hind legs are on their body and they are thin and elongated and their neck has more in common with an estuary in that there's this seemingly constantly flowing line of not sure if it's green scaling or moss that is just seems almost like movement down the sides of her neck and they're not consistent so it's not like it's uh tattooing it's definitely more like genetic marks all the while the birds all abound this area continue to sing and make noise even down the backs of their neck on this long point, there are just that feathering frilling. Very much so like how in modern interpretations of dinosaurs, they have often been seen more and more as if they're still using the hallmark of a scaled reptile, but feathered. Their eyes are this sharp, sharp purple, which is just peering out towards all of you. And her head is easily 15 foot from bridge of nose to the back of the head um held on to this point of like almost like a thick tree trunk of a neck staring towards you all she's just taking a moment and is just staring about you getting an estimate of you all getting an estimate of where you stand looking and it's almost like she's pretty much no other way to really say it, but sizing you up. Sizing you up quite substantially. She speaks out, it is like this low... It's like there's a double tongue playing here, where there's almost like there's another word being spoken under her breath as she speaks. And as she speaks, and all around her still, there is just still like this overhanging portion of mist in the room and in the area. Well, I am at least pleased you understood 
my request of a summons. After scrying on me and my personage, and that which I possess, now here you are, little heroes. So then, and in this moment, you can see that there is an arcane flare between her talons. And she's basically holding them up between what would be the equivalent of a thumb and an index finger. And manifests there, unsure if it's it or a projection, is the spire in a small orb. And she's not holding it close to you. She's about keeping it at about 100 foot away. She's not leaning into you as well, as to say. It's not like she's looming over. She's letting you stand in that space on that di on that uh, pedestal. But she is in the amphitheater. And you can tell it's it, but there is that acknowledgement that this is something that you can hold in your hands. And it looks like an ant on the ground, just in her magnitude. You've been graving these little things. Play with an old woman's curiosity and explain to me why. Um, <laughs> um, they're, um, causing, uh, major disruptions in the weave and the surrounding areas which you've probably noticed in and of yourself. Um. He's staring down to you at this point. It stays back, but she almost like leans in and there's this moment of like, okay, like your perspective of her should get to this point. But this is where I'd ask for those of you who have in the real world gone to sea or gone out or anything else to have seen a whale and you see it in distance and then it close and the perspective of that is a giant thing in the distance to that thing dwarfs all that I am on she leans that little closer to you the claw staying back like as if her whole body is long enough to do it leans in almost towards you. I understand that's what it does. What I'm asking you is why you want it. To, 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 to fix that, to stop it doing that. So that the thing, the worlds are balanced and the planes are in balance again. Because everything's causing problems for everyone. The short answer is that we don't. I am curious why you let a child speak for you all, but there we are. Oh, well, they're in charge. <laughs> Every group's got a leader, right? Huh? Your leader uh, seems to disagree with you. Uh, they might be young, but they're experienced. They're also very uh, quick with words. I suppose I know a lot about magic in comparison to some people. And she does like have that moment where like she does the like eyebrow raise, but she's not a being with eyebrows. So it's just like that whole scaled element just like rolls up that little bit and just like sags back down. And as she is like, a little bit closer as well, like the top of her head is very like the top of a vulture's head in that way like so sunken in eyes like almost like a skeletal look to the top of it and these sharp points down as if they're almost like cutting edges on a beak as the top of her face she leans back pulls away from you and as she's there
Altruism as always. I'm sure none of you will want to take its power for your own and become quite unstoppable, or someone who's told you to go and do this will. Do you even care? Of course we would care. That's why we've already destroyed some. As I said, we'd rather no one have them. We don't want us to have them. We don't want you to have it, frankly. We don't want anyone to have them. Five Geth. Five Geth came to try and take this from me. Insultingly small number. No, that's very, very few. Insultingly skilled small number. Mm -hmm. They know these woods. And that insults me. They are here without my permission, and that insults me. They try to steal something which I have claimed, and that insults me. And there's this moment where... As she's speaking these points, the ground around you rumbles. And you can just see, like, like a bird that is making a um, aggressive display, in a way. Like, all the feathers of the body just start riling up in anger. I tolerated them due to their ties with my sibling. It has come to my attention he is dead. It has come to my attention that he had machinations which would have allowed him to have survived, potentially killed, or even just outright escaped the scenario. And these were robbed to him. His fence was robbed of him. My brother is dead in no small part to her actions. And then she attempts to take from me like a thief in the night. Make no mistake, the reputation of heroes, adventurers, murder hobos, whatever term you suit, I have never tolerated any of you. But I have been scorned. My blood has been scorned. To the point where my brother's essence flowed across the land, and even chromatics got it. Metallics claimed it. And her eye just shoots. Like one eye just shoots at Kayark. Oh, did we bring Kayark in here? That was yeah, a bad idea. No, yeah, Kay Kayark's. Well, <laughs> Kayark kind of didn't want to leave him on his own. <laughs> She did right. say on she did say on the surface before they came in here, like, are you sure that we should do this? And it was like a yeah, it's probably better not to leave him alone. She's been holding his hand. Uh, but there's de definitely uh, a sense of Kika, Kika sort of being like, oh. What is his name? My brother. What's it, what is his name? Love. Do you remember him fondly? No, of course not. But you remember him. But he's my brother. But you remember him. Of course I remember my brother. But he's not dead. He's not truly dead if you remember him.
Make a persuasion check at disadvantage. <laughs> just, a, just do a straight roll, actually. Just a straight oh, roll. A straight roll was a bit higher. The, the, the straight roll was not 20. Okay. Damn. If, unless you want me to reroll. No, I'll take it. Because I didn't tab back over when I said it. I heard the click I and I was already, already talking. She stares at you. Now there's this moment where how best to describe Renara, she stares at you with this contempt. This honest contempt. But there is something about how sincere you speak. That there is no malice in how you say it. There is no attempt at malice, despite the immediate presumption. And she stares to you. His corporeal form was destroyed. His power was fed on, is being fed on, forged upon by those who do not deserve it. All of this was by her design. Heroes came for him. If they had killed him, they proved themselves the stronger. If they do it by cunning, then they prove themselves the smarter. If they just outlast him, they truly prove they are the more tenacious. So be it. That is the way when you make yourself an enemy of the world. But he was betrayed by one he trusted. We were all. And there's this moment where, like, that small orb that is in the finger is definitely a form of, like, you know, indestructible ball-like spell. Mm -hmm. And there's this moment where, like, when she's concentrating on it, there's cracks forming as she's getting more frustrated. And as she stops talking, it allows it to reform. Tell me, children of Faerun, do you know what happened near the spine of the world just before my brother's death? I can't say that we do. Hmm. All bonds between chromatic dragons and gith were sundered. Uh -huh. They dared to try and kill the father. Only one being has the right to attempt to kill Bahamut. And they she they did tried not to do it. that? If not for cloth, he would be gone. Would be a sacrifice to would be in vain. He lives. He is gone from this plane. Injured. But he lives. He dared to try and kill him. Cloth severed the tie and was routing her forces from his fold until your heroes came. 
But so be it, dead gith are dead gith, and yours killed as many as his for them. But she used magic and twisted my brother's mind into rage. I do not know what happens beyond that save for the eruption. But my brother is dead. I do not know if another one of mine is dead. They did that. In one move, she's crippled two very capable individuals from two different worlds. And her crash, one of them dares linger in my wood. So I give you this, call it a contract, as contract means I am bound to it. And let not my mind change from it when I have sworn to it. Kill them. Go to the crash and kill them. Burn it all. And you can have this. You may take from this crash. Anything that you can carry. Anything that seems like it is beyond your understanding, do not take. Anything which is too large, do not destroy. But. I want retribution. Those wretches wait for me to attempt to leave. Either to collect my brother, so that he may be honored and respected, and not bed on like Marian, or for my retribution against them. So we eliminate this. Destroy anything we think we can manage. And you give us the spire, and Vlakith makes an enemy of all chromatic dragons, or at she least your has. elk. Make no mistake, she already has. Out of character, how much... <laughs> this is mostly a me question. How much do we know about what a crash is functionally? So. Do you we just know it's a, bit a of place this. where Gith live? So I can't remember. You get a portion of this from the Gith's arrive, but not a whole picture, so it's a fair question. Picture. Um, picture. Picture. A crash is where Gith go on the material plane to age. Right. Yeah, that's because they cannot we, age yeah. in the image. They cannot age. Yeah. Okay, we we know that. Do the characters know that? You just know that it is a place that uh, Gith use as a location okay. on the material plane. That yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Because basically what I'm trying to work out is, does Pox know this is where Gith does Pox eggs hatch? Know she's, about, she's being told, go kill kids. Basically, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to work out. Um, but no. I don't, so you know what? This sounds great. If we don't, um, yeah, if we don't know in character, then, well... Nope. We, we get to have that moral crisis when we get there. Um... I kind of uh, look to the rest of the party like. I got this for my oath. Gain. Hmm. I don't know, yeah, I kind of just look to the rest of the party. Pox wouldn't make this decision on their own. Um, Do you have the location of this crush? As much I as I say. like. As much as I like, you know, taking a stroll through the woods, I would be kind of helpful if we knew at least the direction in which to go. These are my woods. You agree to this, you will know where to go. You will then know how to get back here. And then you will know how to leave. 
You will not maintain memory of one of those once you have completed it to the other. How, okay. fixed, how, how fixed are you on the terms of this contract? Are you open to negotiation at all? No. Speak, and I will decide. I don't doubt that you would defeat them if, if this happened, but what's to stop us going to this crash and them not sending an even larger, more formidable force here to attack you if and, and reclaim the spire? Then we complete your task, we come back, and our prize is gone. What I pose to you is you help us destroy this spire now, right here, today. And then I don't have a bargaining chip. And we still don't know how to get out of these woods. For that, I will give you a gift. We will then go to the crest for you for the knowledge of how to leave this place. Make a persuasion check. Straight roll. That's a damn good offer. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that gift because I had actually forgotten about that. Oh, no. Oh. Goodness. What no. can we do? No. Everyone to the character sheets. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? Is anyone really going to do anything to affect this? I don't, hang on. I mean, I don't dare cast guidance on myself because they'll know I've cast a spell. That's yeah, true, don't yeah. Cast a spell. Don't You've been we told, were, not, we to, told. not to do anything like that. Uh, you still, you still got the, uh, the, the, the wonder. The you've wonder. got, you've got Lowe's inspiration. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. I do, right? The one dude. Yeah. If, if there was ever a time to invoke him oh, here. Oh yeah. Well, fuck it. Yeah. I'm gonna add twelve to that roll. Yeah. Make it a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Way better. Uh, is that anything else? This moment, Renara. As you are performing, like, you're declaring this out to her. There's this moment where your sincerity gives way to the fact that you are talking to a being, and you kind of move a little bit in place. Like, you shift a little bit. And you realize as you're talking, the beginning of your statement, you've implied that she's weak in that portion. You did not intend to, but you implied that she could be killed, that she could be defeated implying her weakness and in that moment there's this the trepidation that gets into your voice but then you remember how somebody who could be quite frightened of a situation could talk through it straighten up pull your shoulders back you're almost in ready for accepting someone for a dance in a pose as you speak you collect yourself and you carry through, convincingly giving out the statement. She glares down to you. <laughs> I will not accept anything without knowing what I am being offered. A gift alone as a statement is not suitable. Oh, of course. What do you have? Um, <laughs> okay, I don't actually know what it is, do I? Oh, it was just a gift suitable for a... Um, <laughs> is the one you divined? I'll put out the bag. Yeah. Just know yeah. that this, this is a gift for me and my god. For you and yours, and I'll ha hand it. I'll hold it out the bag. So, whatever it turns out to be. You hold out the bag. <laughs> you hold out the bag. And this is a moment where that spire actually gets flicked back to the far end of the room, as if there's a portion of comprehension of that cannot be allowed to happen while this is nearby. And you offer it out, and it floats out out of your hand. It becomes weightless. And it lands down into her palm. 
basically this massive like that almost like a padded bean area underneath the claw right there to it and she flicks it open as she is there and it just begins sprawling out and there's just a bright eminence of a hearth fire just roaring out from it for a moment and her eyes and her full face is just underlit by that light for a moment and the fire keeps burning and this is moment where her eyes focus and readjust with the flame and it just burns in her hand just in the center of her palm an ever hearth a goddess of hospitality knows how to dispose a gift and this is more where like she lets it float from her hand up and it goes up to the top of the chamber and you just see it spreads and spirals in this large flame and this moment where iron you can hear the clinking and clinking and clinking of iron and from the top of the roof by what becomes an immovable rod struck into the roof an adamantine metal hanging down is an immense chandelier brazier and the whole room is underlit with this warm orange glow I will ask you guys at the end when you step away from here to do a thing, but at present just know that you feel more full of life than you could possibly imagine. Like you are warm, you are confident. You feel brave. For the sake of things that will affect you, right now you cannot be frightened. And That's you currently fun. have the effect of the blessed spell on you. Yay! Thanks, Bruno. That would be great if this goes really bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was like, I don't believe in you. to frightening aura. <laughs> in addition, <laughs> at present, you all have the enhanced ability on you. Caveat. You don't have A. You have all enhance ability on you. Oh, damn. What? Every effect from enhance ability is currently affecting you. You do not know if that will last when you leave. But enough of you have been affected by one or two of those effects that you can go, I know that that's that, and that's that, and what are these other ones? Oh, oh my god. god. Why do we have to give this to the dragon? Why can't we keep this for us? It wasn't a gift for us. <laughs> it wasn't for us. That's true. If we're trying to summon it being like, hey, can we have the gift for the dragon? Hashtag the like abbreviation. This is for us. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't have. It wouldn't have spawned. Us. It was just for okay. this. By all means, try to move it. <laughs> yeah, immovable rod. A god put that there. <laughs> A god says this stays here. Where even if the world like, doesn't. Jump it into his chest. It's like, come on, get, get in there, get in there, get in. <laughs> You're just like, uh, can I like I don't know, like vacuum pack it? Come on. Yeah. Fart in a jar. Get it in here. Look, give, it another, give, it, give it 300 years and an adventuring party will be tasked with receiving that. <laughs> yeah. We'll go get that. Hey, stay Thank you. That's a whole lot I of words. I don't actually have it on my spell list. So. Good thing oh, I'm not reading them. So. What, enhance ability? Yeah, I'll just literally through the, the text. Just, just there you it. are. Hey. Yeah. Basically, you guys have okay. all of that right now. Wait, wait, everyone question. jump from medium lines. <laughs> Quick question, question. Can it, can I do, well, is it possible to double to to put because I, I can cast no. that. I don't think you can be a I, We were told not to cast anything. <laughs> oh yeah, we're true, true. No. Also you can't have double advantage. You yeah. can't get double advantage. The only way that would work out is if something gave you disadvantage and you had two advantages, one would cancel out the other disadvantage, you'd still get an advantage. Yeah. Fair enough. But don't worry yeah. about it. 
We won't Bear in mind, it's a fair assumption she's also under these effects. I was going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an AoE. Yep. So bear in mind that that is a. <laughs> that Otlo feels better than he ever has in his it, whole life. It, oh, it, ancient Green right. Dragon. So the, the, the bear in mind, this is an ancient dream, Green Dragon with Bull's strength. Yeah. Is this the first time her servants also, have not been afraid of her? No. Well, uh, exactly. No. Also, advantage on charisma, rating. wisdom, and intelligence. Yeah. We get I'm not. On the inside check if we did it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. She could be the greatest boss known to man. I don't want to know. Not right now. Not when I know how tenuous our relationship is. That's not yeah, my business. <laughs> it might become my business, but not right now. So, at present, that's what you guys currently have. But, actually, no. Because I've done that. Here's what I'll actually do. We'll do this right. Mm -hmm. Well, is gonna make a persuasion check. No. Yeah, I was just getting in the right numbers of it. So, uh, when you guys leave, don't worry about that um, 2d6. Roll 2d10 when you leave. And that'll be how much your maximum and your temporary you currently have. So add it Let's to go. both bars. We'll do it but when you'll we do leave. that at the end. Because yeah. right now, basically, everything is constantly getting refreshed. Yeah. So worry about when you go. And as that's placed up there, you truly went to your goddess to get something to curry my favor. No worthy you made a god placate at my feet. The spire comes back in between her claws. And there's this moment where the illusion dissipates. And from her horde, the real spire gets pulled from the center of her horde in the back of the room and is now floating between her hands. It is in an orb. I'm curious how you mortals have been doing it. Ooh. Oh. By all means, explain it. I cannot help but have that as a curiosity. So, well, I have my own I, methods. Well, well, so, I've well. been referring to it as the anti magic donut. Elaborate. Not, but, we'd much rather show you how it's done. Nope. I will destroy this of my own means. But elaborate about your anti magic donut. Okay, okay. <laughs> you can see it's sort of emboldened by the, the hearth and uh, almost almost like the ADHD of, ah, a topic I, I like. Uh, Kika does actually like... She's dragging a stereo and she's going, ah, she's, she's autistic. She, <laughs> she is autistic. Uh, Kika she's does kind of... an archon. That is not a good combo. <laughs> <laughs> she's got anxiety. No. Um, Kika does sort of rattle off into the explanation that she is previously given to legacy um it, uh, she actually st she actually stumbles over it less than when she did when she gave it to legacy because she has done it an additional time since then so she's refined the theory of how it operates uh, so she even goes as far as to be like actually the word anti-magic donut is actually a misnomer but it's the name that we gave it so now we're sticking with it but it's not actually a donut shape but and carries on and explains the concept of putting an anti-magic as, as you continue talking you just hear a cracking noise and through the indestructible sphere her talents have pierced and are on either end of the spire and she is just fucking crushing it <laughs> and it erupts within the sphere and she pulls her talons out <laughs> unharmed it's the same concept though because you kind of pinch the middle and it's like thank you yeah. thank you of course turn the sphere into a donut and and that's what i'm saying in. i don't know how magic works you're work. basically I, stopping I the magic that is inside from going to the outside that's the important i got thing. that part yeah that's what yeah. that's what the that's what the the 
orb is for. It stops I knew why I had the capacity to do it. I was simply curious how you were performing it. I mean, that looked, that was much easier. That definitely seemed much easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and because yeah. hypothetically, we now don't have to do it again. Yeah. But because really we because we don't possess the, the power and the ability to perform such a thing, so we have to use a disintegrate spell, but then we don't want the disintegrate spell to hit us, hence we have to have the magical donor, because we need to be able to cast the spell and say... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's like wearing a lead vest when you need to get an x-ray. What's an x-ray? <laughs> what's an x-ray? Oh, it goes out the room with an x-ray email. <laughs> Oh, great. What's Roman hasn't published, that. <laughs> hasn't published that book. Uh. Anyway. You people are fucking crazy. Oil anyway, starts leaking out of Minnick's nose. <laughs> um, as she's, like, finished with that now, the claws have, like, gone down, and it's almost like a way that a cat would have their, like, front limbs, like, crossed yeah. almost in a way. Yeah. Kiki kind of realizes that the moment has passed and, like, steps back again like oh i did uh <laughs> i'm most likely going to propose a question you might have known already but do you know your nature child yes yeah yes fair enough The contract is now in motion. You will go to the crash. You will kill them all and burn it to the ground. Leave anything you do not have the capacity to take, the comprehension to understand, or that which is simply too big to fit in a bag of holding. Oh, speaking of bag of holdings, the, the gift was what was in the bag. And can I have... I... It's like been like left in her claw, like like sat basically like there and it's minuscule to her. And it just floats down towards you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, do we have a second bag of holding? Yeah, Barona gave us a gift too. Oh, yes. Gave the players a gift. Yeah, just high five. She didn't know that, but we got it. A gift. The fucking a gift, high five, Brunara. Fucking a gift, a gift, yeah. gift, wor gift worthy of dragon. The gift worthy worthy of D and D players. Right. But really also, bizarre. thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> for allowing us to have it. Our transaction is now ongoing. Yes. That it is. Right. You're yes. gonna I suppose open a bath. You point this in the direction, we kill them all, you give us the knowledge of how to leave. That'll become apparent to you. It'll be the path you walk. It will not remain when you leave. Oh what well, not? And she waves she waves behind you, and the butler steps forward. And as he does, she just turns into mist feathers birds and just Almost like in a way that a vampire would leave a room as a flock of bats, but of just tropical birds. Dope. Spiral of them. In. Love it. I don't, leave room. I, don't, Fuck. I don't know if I... I feel like we've kind of been swept up in this. Or we've even fully, officially ag agreed to anything. We'll talk about it outside. Mm. Mm. Spires destroyed. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, ju I just, I feel like we didn't. I mean, okay, we can talk about it outside, but I feel like, um, words are hard. Um, not, not here anyway. We should head out. The butler behind you all. Arms folded back. Follow me. And turns to leave. 
And as you guys go, roll 2d10. Each or one of us? All of you, individually. Do I remember? That's the number three. Nine. 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 So, everyone add that to both your temporary HP and mark it down in your temporary HP area as well as additional health, which will fade after 24 hours. So it's that added to our max and also as temp. Yes. I'm so mad. I thought I was going to break three digits from that. I'm on Aww. 99. Oh, I'm on 98. I'm so well, close. it'll fade away in 24 hours, so... I know, oh. but I was like, oh my god, I get to touch Whoa. three digits, and then I'm exactly nice. as high as I could get. You just brush. You, you just roll. brush against you the three digits. If you wanted. You could add 12 to that roll. You could use no. the... You could, you could use you the always session to add 12 to it. <laughs> I'm going to use an at a plus 12 to a temporary buff. I I am now I am now you, guys, you bitches on, know what we're about to do, right? I am now on a hundred HP. Exactly. Fuck you. Fuck I am you. on exactly a hundred because I'm my natural HP is eighty nine, so eleven to that. Exactly. I have ninety five. Exactly I needed to 100. roll a five. Gross. Just use a walk. And with that. <laughs> It's nice to have We're HP to above to AC. Take a break. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Okay. Yes. We'll be back shortly. Back in a minute.
Welcome back. I nearly pulled out a knife on the screen the moment I came back into the channel <laughs> because I was following a bit that everyone else was doing. Okay. So, yeah. you guys follow out. And for those of you more perceptive than others, what you do notice is, and those who have a better tracking, is that the path you guys enter in through was not the same path you were now leaving from. You were leaving through a different leading of right to left to left to right throughout this maze of a place. You find yourselves at a staircase. And it opens up, sprawls, and the vines, the roots, the mold all just pulls away onto the sides. And you proceed up. He is at your back. The butler is ensuring you go up. <clears throat> and you go and you go and you walk. And after about five, ten minutes of just staircase walking, which is a bitch to do, as anyone who has done it knows. Literal workout. You, your way, you get yourself to the top of the staircase. You more or less spool out as it doesn't have like a co top cover to it. It just goes out into the open plain area. And as you're there, the butler behind you all, as you're there, a cautionary warning for you, if I may indulge you. You have convinced the lady to carry out a task which she has done. You have said that should she do this, you will carry out a task. Fulfill your duty. As you can see, she has a long Farewell, heroes, and just leaves back down. Essentially, from beneath, steps down, and the just grass just covers over it again. And you look around, and where you guys actually stepped down where that bell was, it's about 50, 60 feet away from where you currently are actually coming out of. Let's keep walking for a little bit, and then we'll have a strategic conversation, shall we? Does it seem like the, the forest is like leading us in a certain direction? Well, who would like to make a survival check? Ah, not me. <laughs> uh, is, is the forest leading the us druid. in the... <laughs> Give me a the second. Druid. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, right, what, a druid, what does the forest say? Um, I, need uh, to first, I need to first double yeah. check. Uh, Mr. Um, well, well, the effects of the enhanced ability, by the way, are gone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> They're only wired around the brazier of the Everhearth. Go in there and lie well, some more. Never mind then. Oh, with advantage, uh, someone's helping. Survival. Nice. I mean, Tony wants one. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll call for Garm one. and for Garm to nudge the the stag. And oh yeah, to, our stag friend. To walk to us. Hey, dude. <laughs> Oh yeah, the mega fauna. Oh, friend. <laughs> what about him? I'm up. Warm returns with this absurdly large mega fauna of an elk with him. Ah, uh, the Megalosaurus. And Megalovania. Dorota. That's what it's called. It's a Megalosaurus. <laughs> As you guys continue out and Serenus you begin taking a look to this and I was mostly asking so that you didn't roll a one um, but you can immediately see a portion of the tree canopy in the tree space just quite sincerely you can see this point of that's a really obvious way to walk straight through that and you move towards it and you can just see 
All this space is perfect for like three people to walk abreast. And the party follows you. And you continue following that path. Talk when you guys want to. I'm gonna have my cup of tea. When we get far enough away. How far do you think is far enough away? <laughs> with let me with a mind that we are in the house of our host. Um, at all times we're under yeah, their gaze. A hundred percent. Under their gaze and they can still see us. Yes. Um, I... Pox... <laughs> kind of channeling a bit of one who is obviously very quiet. Um, and kind of channeling it and just says, Just remember... We take only what is not too heavy for us to carry. And nothing that is too large to fit in a bag of holding. I think that's beyond our understanding. But... There are many things which I feel I could not carry if I took. That is what I will say. Yeah, they might have some really big roots. Didn't hear the end of what you said, but it was still funny. Really big loot. Big, big loot. I know what you're, you're like, we can't be taking a couch or anything, you know? Bitches, I'm implying things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Where? They have been implied. I know what you're implying. We know it does not. They have, they have been implied. Implied <laughs> they have been. <laughs> we won't get upstairs. <laughs> um, I think as the um, the I think as they're walking, it's it's obvious that Kika like wants to say something and just kind of like isn't. <laughs> you can just bear in mind who's listening. How does the legality of these contracts work? When I guess it was kind of me that made the contract. And, and out of character, it is funny to think how differently that encounter would have gone if Nemo was here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if Nemo was here? That uh, would have been in writing. Yeah. That would have been each point would have been I negotiated. And that I, would think be the whole it, I think session. it's the spirit of Nemo that has made Kika be <laughs> like, I didn't technically agree to shit. Yeah. Oh, it's such a shame that the party would go and do something, though. That's also why I'm... Like, again, it's like the spirit of one. And, like, one is with all of us. That is, like, that's why I'm picking on these like specific these technicalities. I, I did yeah. make it very clear that I'm not the leader. So I can't make a contract on behalf of the party. And I didn't, I and I didn't agree to more... anything. Specific, I specifically said who the leader of the group was. And therefore, they have all legal rights to make contracts on the I of the feel part. you trying to get right. out of the whole I think contract. De yeah, delegate is delegation is oh, it'd be me that is under the contract. This is all above oh. table. I will say, trying to get out, out of the whole contract, which on the whole is, you know, Dubious. has done us some good, is ill advised. Having if we do things that are, let's say, outside the scope of that contract, or perhaps feel uh, renege on the specifics, that's easier to explain and negotiate than trying to pretend the entire contract didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, being like, well, finding a reason why we did or didn't do certain things is going to be easier than being like, we technically didn't agree to anything when like that conversation just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Gaslight gatekeep girl boss. I'll lay out this one. Day. No, no, oh. I play it. We, I, 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 I am I mean, just. I can. I have I a just... plus 12 to deception. I am just going to picture, right? It's that, like, we, we do all this, we go back. And then Nemo's here, and she's just like, um, so I've been reading over the contract since we last <laughs> left here. <laughs> and we have a few points. She yeah, would do that. I'm watching this episode. Right? No, she, she is going to yeah, do she, that. Yeah, she, she, she is fully a... there, just like, you didn't get anything in writing. It is not legally binding. 
Boom, boom. <laughs> I'm ready. Listen, that's one's grand return. <laughs> For now, we're going to go do some Small and order D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go to fucking Primus Court. <laughs> I guess I guess I mean, yeah, you want to? <laughs> that that is a court that would fully be neutral. <laughs> they do but not I mean favorite. Are you asking me if I want to die personally or <laughs> <laughs> spiritually? That'd be a different answer. Mm. Thinking about it. Mm. Don't <laughs> don't about dying personally. No, I th I Go think on, very Heroin. A Go decent on, amount no, of this I'll relies be... on us not thinking, actually. Mm. Well, no, I, I, I mean, was, I wasn't I was... thinking like weird. <laughs> Is that Runara or Kay speaking? Yes. <laughs> I love you. Because I'm more so thinking on, again, Oath of the Watcher. Aaron's like, Did how it? do I not break this oath? How do I not break my paladin oath? Yeah. Well, because the thing of it is... I'm a blood hunter. I don't give a shit. <laughs> It's trying to figure out where do guests stand on being part of the material plane versus not being part of the material plane. Are they technically invading the land? And so in doing so, by making this crash in a being We're going to get into domain. some really tenuous territory here. Oh, yeah. I, I, did, I did already have that thought on the break of, like, technically, none of them are inhabitants because none of them are well, from here. Technically, <laughs> where right. were they born? You said they weren't okay. born here, well, so they're are, not are native. They, do they get born in a crash? We might get there, no. and it is a crater. I mean, so <laughs> let's leave the philosophy until after we get there. Mm. <laughs> This is de this is definitely uh, us as players overthinking because again in character oh, in character sure. we don't know what's there. <laughs> no, I know. I'm in denial. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. they're gonna be kids and we're gonna set them on fire. Let's no, go. we're not. No, we're not. Um, I, uh, I think to go You're back, I think to dip down back uh, in into uh, character. Uh, or I think what Kika kind of the only thing that she brings herself to say is just kind of m muttering that uh, like guys can just agree to to that like without discussing anything i know it's a very scary situation it wasn't really a back and forth in that she just kind of said you're gonna do this and she just kind of went okay no, no, there, was a, there was a one back there was one back and then a fourth so she said just go do it and then go to short the spire mm. but i gave her a big shiny fire yeah i was also um slightly concerned uh that if we started negotiating terms, she might ask for a new shiny for her collection. We gave her one anyway. Not the one that mattered. Mm. Mm. I like you talking more, but be careful who you pick. It's not my fault I have to talk. No. We were tasked with killing whole bunch of the bad of us. These are people loyal to Slacker. People who are looking for the spires and are actively opposed to what we're doing. Have you never killed someone that's opposed to what your your goal is? Not generally. I do self defense in most cases. I don't know why people keep trying to kill me. When I've barely been on this plane long enough <sighs> for trees to drop their leaves. People always say that two wrongs don't make a right, and this feels like we're doing what they're doing. And they're the ones we're trying to stop. It doesn't feel right. I think it could be killed already. I don't know. I know we've killed a lot. That doesn't make me feel good either. But in general, we're trying to protect ourselves. This is going to them and just committing... I don't know. It just doesn't... We haven't done anything yet. Um... And you don't have to do anything. We don't normally go looking for a fight. Fights normally come and find us. That's a generalization. 
I, mm. I feel like the interaction was going to go one of two ways. One, we're in her home. We either get out alive or we get out dead. And this way, we get out alive. <sighs> Do you have any other, anything else you would have said or any other counter-argument or counter-agreement to the contract that you would have offered? Get that spire in our possession or destroy it and get us out alive. I mean, she definitely liked the gift. I don't know. Probably maybe would have tried to use that a bit more rather than... Because cause, cause essentially what, what we've done is she had the gift and destroyed the spire. And mm -hmm. technically what we're doing now is doing a job so that we can leave the forest. They're like, mm -hmm. It's almost like two separate things have happened. Yeah. No, it is exactly like that, yes. Do we need to do that? We can leave the forest. They, were, they had absolutely... If it, Yeah, we probably can leave the forest. Do you think they would let us leave the forest? I, I mean, probably not now. No, no, before, before. Sage deal was, here's the gift, destroy the spire, we part ways. What's going to stop them being like, okay, we've done that. We get fucked. I don't know. At, at that point, we're having to defend ourselves, aren't we? And, and we put like... We have... You yourself put things in place. Yeah, but... I don't really trust the dwarves. Uh, hmm. No... Me and one could probably try to help, but stuff like that isn't always reliable. I'm I'm sorry. I I don't know. Oh. Just, some just something about this one doesn't feel right. You want me to put it in the big picture? Mm. There's no more spies. We this just one, got really? that just now. There's, well, there's that, one that more, but one. It's, there's one more, but it's accounted for. But yeah, that is that is a good that is a good thing. That is that is a good thing. Awesome. At least and we that... didn't even have to lose another limb to do it. Yeah, that destroying that. <laughs> what spoil was that? Which for the magic? Abjuration. abjuration. But that was abjuration. conjuration. Sorry. Abjuration is the oh. one that's uh, water deep has. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah I suppose. It, our way. I suppose yeah. at least things aren't appearing from alternate planes now, which is. What I started the conversation with when she even asked, you know, what do you want these for? And it's like to put things back into balance. I'm not trying to, you know, do anything. I just want things to be the way they should be. But did you think that's what she wanted? Probably not. She was the one who contacted us. Who could who can say what she wanted? I don't pretend that she, I know what others want. A deal, a blow against Black Air. Yeah, that's probably more likely. It's what we're doing. She helped us with the blow we wanted to deal against Black Gift, and now we're helping her with the blow she wants to deal. We didn't care if that spire was destroyed or not. We did. We don't care if these give them are not to speak to the group. I've obviously done that too much already. I don't care if these gift are alive or not. She does. How much is apparent? Um. Yeah, I, I think I don't think I have much more to say. I don't have an answer. There probably isn't um an answer that anyone can be happy with. This is the kind. This is the kind of stuff that happens in that there isn't an easy answer. Yeah. yeah. People don't want to do these things. They have they just have to, you know. And everything people just hold that against them. Kind of like sideways glances at Pox. <laughs> Pox is like biting her tongue so hard. <laughs> you don't have Pox to do anything right now. <laughs> Pox is taking up knitting. No, that's more therapy than Pox will ever do. No, Keek Ke is the one who canonically knits. <laughs> um, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. 
is that uh, is that actually true though? Mm -hmm. You personally don't have to do anything that I agree to. That doesn't mean some of us don't. Religion check. No, oh, I know what the answer. I know. Oh, it was it both, both of us? Right? <laughs> Who knows? Nah. Everybody's making a religion I just, check. I just, I just heard religion check, and I assumed it was. I'm Barry. not even gonna entertain it. I'm not. I'm assuming it's not me. It could be me. <laughs> I got messaged by somebody. Oh, okay. Ignore that. Then. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Make a religion check to know that Bruno will not be, not be chill about it. <laughs> Bruno will remember that. <laughs> I mean, it's got us in the hearth and hospitality. Do with that what you will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were hospitable. Uh, mm, somebody else's house. Uh, but, Narwin. <laughs> You were trying to design this into logic. A yes or a no. A inhabitant or an invader. Neutral to the location or not. And you focus in on this question, on this theory. And you do not get a positive or a very strong answer. But when your mind thinks to it, invader, you get that warmth in your chest, so that little fire that is always rolling actually does rise. But then your mind goes to inhabitant and it also rises. They are both. Do with that what you will. Hogs just keeps walking. Now we're going to use the, uh, Big old um, elk. Just gonna walk next to them. Well, I'm I'm on the elk. I've been the elk this whole time. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. I'll walk up with um. I would love to say she's in her own thoughts, but she's she's not. The, she's dissociating. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just gonna stoically walk a little bit in front of the party. She's walking in front of them, Kika kind of stops being subtle for a minute and is kind of looking at the back of your head. <laughs> yeah, You're you can keep look looking. <laughs> um, I am going to keep my head on a swivel for any um, familiar gift technology. By all means, make a perception check. Because I want to shift, but I don't want to do it too early. Okay. Remember where I kept those. For now. You guys continue moving, and it was about midday when you did get to her abode. It's getting towards further and further towards evening. And you were just following this path. 
get the sense that this path will continue once you continue on it, so you can stop. Rest up. I suppose we have to. What, what spells have we put to go? No idea. I don't know. I can, um, I can scout ahead a bit if you want, but... Probably not a good idea to split up in this forest. I agree. Okay. Okay. Camp it is. How's Kayuk been handling things? Not well. Kayuk. The issue is, is that Kayuk. He's your brother. So, make an insight check with advantage, please. Nineteen. Okay. Okay, Kayark. You beat him by one. <laughs> let's go, little sister, let's go. <laughs> He's shaken. <clears throat> you don't have the full context of what these emotions are, but you can tell he's feeling something. He has the look of somebody who has just come out of sludge. He feels like he's, he looks like he's, is in a state of disgust or repulsion of all about him. And he isn't really responsive to a lot of people. He's kind of staring beyond and just walking with everyone. Mm. And it's just, it's unsettling in a way for you because you know him. And he usually is a little chatty, but he's just quiet. And you're aware of when it's in absence. Mm -hmm. Kika wants to say something, but she doesn't know what to say. She's been talking a lot. <laughs> Do you guys set up camp? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will... The moment that the night hits... Just like mentally um, send up a little message being like, you're with me no matter what, right? There's a long pause. Less of a... You've, se you've, you've seen him sending spells sent to people who are not fully awake. It's this moment of <clears throat> always I am with you. I walk with you. Yeah. I have no right to judge anyone. Me neither. I will judge you. I will never judge you. Thanks, bud. Maybe don't watch this part. I will. Thanks. 
Um, I'm gonna sit in tree, as I do. Um, and I'm... Um, I'm gonna practice shifting into a Githyanki. All right. Give me a constitution check. Or a constitution save, I believe it is. This is for, as we know, for pushing out. Minimizing the, the demonic. <laughs> exactly. You've got it in one. Damn. Let's go. There we go. I love to see it. I actually love to see it. Yeah, me too. I wish it wasn't this. <laughs> So. I'm gonna shift for, for, for the maybe one person. I'm gonna shift into Valor because I have a Gideon Why wouldn't I use that? Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna shift into Valor. Obviously, because this is this world and not Baldur's Gate, um, it's just like. Add Polis. It's just what uh, Pox comes up with is a. Uh, yeah. Dark skin, give Yankee, kind of black hair with a stripe or two of white going through it. Really pale eyes, um, very kind of elongated and feminine, very, very long ears. In a way, almost like an inversion of Poe's more changeling form of. It's black definitely and on eyes, the posy. Yeah, it's definitely more on the posy line. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's definitely more like softer, more feminine, less threatening. Which is really funny to say because Valor's terrifying. Um, but yeah. Okay. Just just practicing it for now, getting it into the muscle memory so that when I need it, I can just use it. Okay. The we very literal those. muscle memory. <laughs> yes, very literal muscle memory, and we love to see it. So, you focus in on changing, and you can. There's this moment where your head, you almost faint, but you managed to pull yourself. And the reason is, anemia. you've always had, recently you've had a portion of horn on your heads or like horn yeah. always about you. That's now gone. The weight <laughs> and the kind of pressure down on your head of that, which you were not used to, you did not grow up with, no. is immediately gone. And there's this moment of your head almost falling away from it. And rattling your brain in a moment of concentration, which you pull back from. And you look down and it's that almost like almost like dark leathery kind of like tawny skin. And you just pull out a small mirror looking over the face. And with with your hands almost it's as like well in, in a way. Uh, in clay clay mode, yeah. which is how in which clay. is how which is how Pox made Get Posey out of my originally. Head. I was say clay. No, yeah. That is how Pox made Posey is looking into a reflection in some water and just like making so yeah goes back to character creation screen yep and just start fucking around it's just down by the river and it's like <laughs> <laughs> who you've been down where with who so you have that moment you focus it and pull it out how do you feel in this body I think more conflicted than she is expected to be. Mm. Like, she, she full disclaimer, she's making this for the purposes of infiltration. Like, yeah. easy approach. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's... <laughs> I mean, a bit beyond putting yourself in someone else's shoes. You know, like, she literally makes herself into a gif. <laughs> um, and I think it's the, you know, she's sort of been going at this with a sort of, like, detached, dissociated, like, gr I'm, uh, you know, the, 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 the mode she sometimes enters, which is like, if someone's going to do the, the bad thing, it's going to be me. Um... So if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. And it's like this moment of like, uh-oh, do I have a moral compass? Uh-oh, don't be in there. I don't need you right now. Um, so I don't think it's a comfortable feeling. Mm. Um, 
the reason but like I am. also tempered with a bit of like oh thank god i changed correctly <laughs> yes you have the relief of i've managed to successfully change and you have that like there's a bit of like a delight to that of i actually managed to do this holy crap this is wonderful i, I couldn't be happier and while you're there you can feel the moon's presence is watching over you again. Waiting for a moment, honestly. As if waiting for, essentially, you to acknowledge them before they speak. Come on. I'm just testing. I know. You're doing great. I wanted to say something, though, for yourself. You're not going to like it, and I think you need to not like it. But it's a warning. Okay. You can see further than me. Prey act irrational when their young are threatened. I know that. Like, aside, they're deliberately not responding at that point. I know that. Where do you think you're going? Oh, it. Yeah. There's this moment where, like, they're speaking that word in your head. And almost like for a brief moment of a dialect switch, you see it in your mind, the word. And you get very uncomfortable as the word is changed in your head to its common tongue alternative. Mm. Nursery. What does it matter? What does it matter? <laughs> there are many who think we're monsters. We don't need the proof of we worked out a long time ago it doesn't really matter what we do now if we have a choice we <laughs> oh, yeah, we what you and me walk away from this then what they're not gonna do it they're not gonna do it Why should you have to? We all die if they don't. Maybe. I don't think we have much room for second guessing. Just ask you to be careful. You always, always be careful. Thanks, bud. Thanks. Pox is being very blase about it, but she is not blase about it in her brain. Nope. <laughs> and do you think he might have an idea about that? Yeah, yeah, it will be apparent to him that it's like, Fox is like, it doesn't matter, I don't care. It could be as <laughs> caring immensely. So, cares so much. Like, d did not until he actually told her what it meant. It genuinely did not. I was like, well, I'm going to go kill some people. I've killed many people. Um, it's like, uh oh, feelings, uh, complicated feelings, messy feelings, uh, bad feelings yep. mostly. Um, yep. It's like, I cannot. Think about that. 
Whoa, feelings be upon you. No! <laughs> Moon be big feelings I'm... at you. <laughs> <laughs> Moon's putting chemicals in. <laughs> <laughs> you have the blood heart of the complex. Uh, Night carries on. Yeah. Night carries on. Chess is played. <laughs> Contemplations are had. Mm. Oh, we actually go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's a moment when we're all sort of together. Mm -hmm. And we'll buy three or something then. Um, I kind of speak to the group and I know I didn't really talk about this agreement just to bump crap over on you, but I know some of you don't like it. I need to know where you all stand. For him. I'm doing what I have agreed for us to do. Just from like up on the tree, like just kind of legs dangling down, just like looking down to like the group meeting. Um, I'm gonna do what I have to to get us all out of here alive. That's how I feel about it. I'm gonna protect my friends, obviously, and my family. But. How do you feel about going to this place and doing what I've said we're gonna do? Morally, it doesn't feel right. So. I don't want any of you to get hurt. So I'll do my best to look after you and protect you, but I don't know if I'll be able to bring myself to I don't know. I'll defend myself. I don't wanna die. Mm -hmm. But if that if I'm if I'm in a situation where I'm alone with someone who is unarmed and hasn't at attacked me, I'm not going to attack them. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'm just about about this. As it stands, part of the contract states that we not carry anything we find too heavy. And as it stands, I would not be able to carry the burden of breaking my oath. which at this time feels I would not be able to do in good conscience of this because in my praying and everything, while well, yes, they are invaders, but they are also inhabitants. They don't bring, they do not tip the scales out of balance. If they did, then the plane of all and order would have more say in what they're doing here. But as it stands, I feel should anything happen from this, that I will not raise a sword possible inhabitants of the material. Okay. 
Yeah, right, let's shout to your brother Alex. Ali. Yes. How do you feel about <laughs> how does Serenus feel about going to the crash and killing mm. Yeah. It's I have a very complicated thing with it because at the same time I am well just in character question by the way. I know. Just just for just for your reference. <laughs> It's a complicated nature of how I feel about this matter. On the one hand, I agree with uh, Kika that attacking innocents and things like that is not a good thing. Someone who is not actively armed me. However, on the other hand, what they did to my home, the people that I loved and cared about, that is something that, even now, does not sit right with me. And if I am to level the scales, then I will do what I must to level those scales. Last one, but they're already asleep. Um... Did, did they slept, but okay. Um... They've got sunglasses on, they're just in the corner. I already started her meditation. That's, okay. The chess pieces um... are still moving, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> For the win. Can anyone remember, have I used the sending stone today? Who is it? Who's got that one? Don't believe so. Would I it? do. I don't think so, because no, we I, slept in the forest. Not to. We've yeah. been together the okay. whole time. Yeah. We've not been the usual self since we've been in this forest. How do you feel about the next steps? Mm -hmm. There's like a quiver to their throat as he speaks. Mm -hmm. I've. Um... I've been fighting a lot of internal thoughts, stuff that rears up, and I don't know why it's there. I don't understand. It's stuff that I'm not like. I don't like that I'm thinking like that, and then I am. So I need to pull away, and I need to go quiet. And. What she said about essences and infusion, and I'm really not comfortable with who I am right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you need a monster, I can. <laughs> I don't know. Don't say stuff like that. What? Uh, I don't think we need monsters. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't... I don't... That's okay. Yeah. Uh, that's... I... You, you've answered the question. Yeah. And he kind of like just almost like curls into himself a little bit like fingers are like at the, where, where the brow would be on their on their form and just pushing back like the, the feathery uh, mm -hmm. down of it there. Because like cudd seem... cuddling up to him. It's this moment when you do that as well. It's almost like he kind of like pushes you like away, but in doing it, it's just I just don't want mm -hmm. to be touched right now. Sorry, it's not you. It is me. Like the hands like shake and just like clenches them together. It's me. Just stares back into the fire and just zones out again. 
after a few minutes. I'm gonna use the sending stone. Yes, queen. To win it. Because I'm assuming she can hear everything we say, but hopefully this... <laughs> oh. We'll see. Assumptions are dangerous things to make. Pox is stupid. I love her for it, though. <laughs> Which do you think is the actual insult? The presence of a bunch of gith, or the physical structure in her domain? In her mind, I feel... It is the populace, not the structure. Or the populace has caused her pain versus the structure. What? <laughs> okay. That's the yeah. yeah. I can't communicate that... with you telepathically anymore. Mm -hmm. Message can trip. <laughs> I mean, out of character. I mean, that is the the biggest problem of this whole thing. Yeah. Not that the, it's a structure in her vicinity. That she doesn't matter. That wouldn't matter. No. The actual populace. Which would she notice if it disappeared? Is what I'm thinking. But is it worth risking the eternal vengeance of an extremely old green dragon? I don't know. I don't know. Questions, questions, questions. Mm. Basically, out of above table, what the the line I was going down is like, do you think it a big explosion and being like, look, this thing is gone would be enough flattery to her ego? To, to be resolved? Or do you think she's going to be really thorough about it? She gives the vibes of someone who would be thorough. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, she's going to probably know magic's being used in her woods. So if we try teleporting them out and being like, hey, I haven't have gone into the leave. specifics in my mind of yeah. getting them out of here, to be honest. It was more exactly. just like, do you think we could make a big explosion and that would be enough? Um, yeah. Because she's, she's going to know the magics that have probably been cast throughout her woods. And most yeah, likely it, it comes descends. down to how much of her supposed her capacity is ego mm -hmm. versus at what she's actually capable of. Because yeah. we... Rightly, I think, didn't test that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh, Nemo. Oh, oh, oh buddy. God. When you know what we've done, you're going to be so angry with <laughs> They're us. They're going to be very upset. <laughs> upset, yeah. Um, um, okay. I feel like I'm on a, a like a carriage that is moving very quickly, and it's like it's just going where it's going, and I'm just on it.
Because the other thing is, too, she never stated anything as of proof. No. Which... Huh? That's kind of what Kika was getting at, which is like, there wasn't really anything formal. Which we've done a I lot mean, of because direct. of one, yeah, because of one, we've done a lot of in the past. We've done a lot of making it written down and signing it and handshakes. There was none of that. Yeah, she just kind of <laughs> there was pressure. Exactly two people who said anything about it. I don't want to. I'm gonna say we're gonna go to bed, and then I know what's gonna happen next. Is like I can see I've got fucking future vision right now. <laughs> I know what's about to happen, and there's nothing I can do. Um, we're gonna get a truck and go to a little tent. It just goes inside. Hmm. I promise I'm not trying to have a shit eating grin on my face. I'm just enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the suffering's yeah. part of the fun. I understand it. Yeah, yeah. You get to get me tomorrow, so it's all good. And I will. Um. um yay. Not if I'm mad. Then again, I mean. It's more of a case of now it won't be a single cleric that has the scorn of a dragon. It'll be a whole party. Which has been in past before. This is also what I'm trying to work out. It's like if we completely renege on this, like what what's worse? <laughs> and I think that answer depends on the character that you are. It's like either the moral guilt is worse or the eternal vengeance is worse. Well, the thing of it is, the moral guilt, well, moral guilt for me becomes Oathbreaker. Uh huh. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah you have very yeah. literal yeah. guilt. Yeah. <laughs> Both yeah. RP and mechanical reasons to not do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm hitting the do you want to go to sleep button in a RPG and then it's like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I keep hitting no. Uh, no. No, 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 it's, it's more... <laughs> no, no, it's, it's more... It really it's, more of the, uh, it's more of the when you when you go to bed in a game and it's like, and it pulls up saying um, make sure you do all side quests before going to do this. <laughs> like, like, Certain like, areas will be unavailable to you after this point. Yeah. And you're like, wait, yeah. what? What do you NPC, mean? NPCs being like, if you have an, any unfinished business, make sure you go do it first. Uh, <laughs> just like, what do you mean? This is literally what you're like when you go do the gift crash in PG3. It's like, hey, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you better make sure you're ready. Mm. Kika is okay. going to do something, but it's going to be, like, Long absolutely way. last. Okay. Which is... is yeah, above the table, she's going to cast Dream on Kayak to try and make sure he gets a good night's sleep, because he, oh, okay. he, cause he's stressing. Out of bed. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she can't... She, could, yeah, she, she can try to make him go to sleep, but it's more that she when, when he goes to sleep, she wants to cast Dream on him to try and make sure he has a good night's sleep. And if I'm correct, Dream as well is a... You enter it with them. Yeah. Uh, yes. They don't. They don't have to be Useful aware. Nap. Yeah. They don't have to be aware that she's there, but she is there. So the lion care. We haven't. Are we still asleep. Everyone is getting ready to sleep. Kika, you cast dream on care when care eventually drops. And I say drop as in they were sitting and just boom. He dies. No! <laughs> <laughs> you cast dream. And is anyone else doing anything before sleep takes you? Hmm? Oh, okay. First, I'm going to need to this. You're going to need to... I didn't hear that last part. Oh, Roll. Just, just that. 
Um, I mean, everyone, you won't all know this is happening, but uh, anyone that sees you in our Oliva tent will see she's just in very simple, just a very simple priest gown, sort of sleepwear, no armor, no weapons with her, just a bag by her side, and she's gonna walk off just into the tree line. Are you following the path or are you going into the tree line? Uh, I'm following, I'm going into the tree line, but I'm, go I'm going to the path once I'm yeah. out of camp. And I'm yeah. gonna go invisible and follow Renara. Okay. Because, hate to break it to you, Chief. I, I know, I know. Hang on. I was hoping one person you would really see You really wanted to roll that low. This is the one time you don't want a natty 20. Um, I'm going to message you something as well, Nass. Okay. While you do that, I'll describe the dream. Oop. So, you are creating basically a flying dream. Essentially, you and Kerk in the air, in a dance, in a way that... Interesting. Interesting, fair enough. Um... You are flying with him in this dream. And you can tell he's... But you're not with him, but you're around him, essentially. You know he's there. He doesn't fully know you're there. Kind of letting him do it. And what you see, because you're slightly above him watching it, is that he's flying over an ocean. And what you notice underneath is that there is just a shadow that is rising up from underneath the water. And it is incredibly long, incredibly wide. It is the silhouette of a dragon underwater. And it dwarfs him. And there are shadows above you. And you can just see the whole area gets dark glance up it is another dragon above you you know that one that is claw that is an essence of him so you know how this dream is going to go so i will let you change it in a moment cloth is going to descend and this other dragon, this golden dragon, is going to spin out of the water and erupt up towards him, and they will both crush in atop him. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, in this dream space, uh, because essentially Kiki can do what she wants, um, exactly. she uh, sort of presses herself she becomes present she was she was standing she was keeping back and watching this and she manifests herself um but she doesn't appear like herself if anything she looks like her familiar as kika bursts forth she's the, also taken on this draconic form um purple and starry with the bl with blue stars as well uh with the slightly antler like horns and the sort of separated wings, um, that she uh, is the same size, if not even larger, uh, than all of these. And she sort of interposes herself between uh, Klaus and Kayak above, and uh, with her four claws, she sort of gently almost hugs him, and surrounds him, and the star sparkles that come off her in this large draconic form sort of envelop him in just a safe, safe cloud. Like this, like the feeling is is warm. It is literally like a, like a hug, it is warm and safe. And as she is holding with this, her enormous wings uh, beat and flap, and blow away these images like they are dust on the wind. I'll describe a little bit. I'll add to that because that was great. Um, I'm going to go back to a sea reference again because it's easy to use creatures of the sea as a reference due to the fact that they're the only things we have that are even remotely close to anything we know in fantasy. 
So there was a very common occurrence in the sea world in which smaller prey of an orca will have blue whales directly interfere with hunts, even from hundreds of kilometers away. And they will just interpose their bodies. They are too big. They are too strong. They will batter them with wing and tail, with fin and tail. In this moment, you cup down, and it's as cloth is coming. And you cuddle down into it, and it's almost like the stars erupt around, and it is like a... A miasma in the air of stars, like razors, and in this form it's as if they are shadow, they are paper, it cuts, it takes chunks as they try to pull away. And this figure from beneath, you just batter as you say with your wings, your wings come down and bounce away the immensity of the figure beneath, and they just erupt out. And those figures go. Make an Archon check, please. Twenty-three. Okay. So, you get to choose which of those abilities Carrick will have tomorrow. Oh. For helping him through this. Okay. And you focus into that, and then Carrick is aware of you again, and this nightmare has now transitioned to a happier dream, like almost a moment of pseudo consciousness mm -hmm. before falling back into the dream, and you mm -hmm. fly. Uh, well, Kayak is, I mean, he's, he's, obviously he's <laughs> reasonably smart. I don't know if he will necessarily make the connection, because while the dragon is starry, at no point does he see Kika. He just sees Correct. this other also, being appear. Also, how many people can sincerely confirm whether or not they know what a dream is like? Yeah, it's, it's a dream state. It could be a, like, he probably has a recollection of a starry dragon, which is going to be gone the moment he wakes up. Okay, then. You do that. Hi, Runara. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we doing, buddy? Um, I'm gone. And you're being followed by Poe. So, Zero! <laughs> Oh god. Okay. Everything is awesome. <laughs> no one. I meant I have it. Good news. Don't be here. <laughs> Run. <laughs> leave. Don't leave. I want you to stay. You're trapped now. Our party is yeah. our party is actually crumbling apart. <laughs> it's wonderful. They need you. Yeah. And you're now here. Uh, so. With like they... half hour with like twenty minutes to go. So we get no. a five minute what happened in the last two hours. Correct. So, Old Narbal described their disdain for the Gith and made an offer. Kill the Gith in their crash, burn it to the ground, and she will destroy the spire. Runara, with a very, very good pair of rolls, one of which was helped by an inspiration dice from Lo, from that buff you guys all got at the end of the thing, which, by the way, Runara, yours is gone now. Um... I probably did leave off the character That's all good. Um, instead, it's here is an artifact that uh, Runara got from a divine intervention from a little bit back. Gifted to... Uh, was designed to be a gift. I remember. Gifted. And they took it with a persuasion set. Instead of destroying the spire afterwards, destroy the spire now, because we can't leave without you guiding us out, because you can keep us in these woods. So, they destroyed the Spire. Spire of Conjuration is now gone. Their magic is now properly re-actualizing. Not still fully there, because that takes a while to fade, but starting. And now your party is stuck with the conundrum of, they had a verbal agreement to go and do this. And it's a lot. Because only two people verbally agreed to it, or verbally discussed it. When they gave back the agreement and she broke her side of it, or broke her part, which was her part of the thing of snapping that and destroying it, putting them into this contract. No legal binding, no written word. I imagine you'll watch it back uh, later. And but get yeah. very upset with them. That's where they are. 
they're now at camp resting. And Runara, bear in mind, essentially anywhere they walk in the wood now, they're being guided directly to the crash. Runara has got up and have left in the middle of the night. Poe, who has, with a successful high constitution save, managed to turn into a gith, is invisible and following. <clears throat> so, Runara. Do you have your shoes on, even? Oh. Cool. You could feel that incredible uncomfortableness of large gnarled roots underfoot, which anyone who's had to stand on those knows that's a bitch. It's uncomfortable. And you can feel that squelch underneath your foot where moss from grass from condensation of the cold as well. Because it is cold. But you are always warm. Keep walking. Maybe up Keep 30 walking. minutes. 40 minutes. You walk 30 minutes, you walk 40 minutes. And you keep following the path. Make a perception check. And Poe, advantage in stealth checks, please. Technically, you we are invisible. Oh, I won't wait. Oh, that was Most just of the people yeah. you'd be... It was a 19. It was a 19. So, you look around, you don't see anyone. You're in the clear. I, I don't mind if Renara knows that I'm following. I think, on some level, Renara probably does know that I'm following. Well, I mean... You can't see point, anyone following you. At this point, Renara takes the bag off her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Taking her armor out the bag, taking her boots out the bag. Yep. Taking the time to re equip all of her armor. Yep. The only you thing. Spend the time doing it. But what she doesn't see is the hammer. She doesn't take the hammer out of the bag. And she's continued. Once she's fully gone to her armor, she continues on the path. Okay. Takes about an hour. Hour more after you, so about two hours to the camp. You keep walking, and you can just see the shrubbery and this density all about you. And this is the moment where you step, and your leg disappears. You still feel it. Like your leg is there, but you just don't see it. And you've seen Fandolin. And seen that it has a similar effect of an illusionary aura about it. But this, you don't get the sense of magic, interestingly. But you step through. Poe, you see this as well. And you have to get down to actually go in because there's no trees to this point. Mm. So there Makes is sense. actually a silhouette of you stepping through. Because physically you are passing through a barrier. Like, treat it like walking through a rain curtain where, or a water curtain where there's yeah. a silhouette of you. Like a projector. You in. Yes. You step in. You're there. And there's this sincere moment of, what am I doing? But you're there. And you can see ahead of you this large stone and in some cases, you're not sure what stony materials, if it's marble or if it's something else, is being used. But this place which has all these vines that are just wretched up, like as if nature is trying to reclaim this land, reclaim this building. And you can see portions of it are built into like a stony outcropping as well. You can see high points of trees and um, wooden bridges between tree canopies at top and high points beyond and within this wall of this camp. But that's not what you draw your eye to first. The first thing you draw your eye to is a familiar face standing at essentially what is the front of this little like entry walkway to a large 20 foot by 20 foot, like two 20 foot doors that would swing wide uh, entranceway. The gloves are clean since you've last seen them. It's the doctor from Yatar. Jakas, the doctor you remember. Is he standing around, or...? 
They are standing, staring directly out towards you. Their hands kind of clench down to the sides of them. Like, just stood seemingly impassively as they're there. There's no one else around that you can see. I'm gonna grab Runara's hand and like duck behind a building to break eyeline. You touch their hand and then you move and run. Do you bring Runara with you or do Yeah, you... I like grab Runara's hand, yeah. Runara, you feel somebody grab your hand. Probably Poe. You can tell that glove, I suppose. Do you let her pull you? Bear in mind that this person can see you, has seen you. Probably. I'll probably try to resist it, but I'm probably too surprised to do it with once. Yeah, I mean, if he resisted at all, yeah. yeah. I'll just get into. Oh, fuck, do I? No, I'll just throw him next to Renara invisible then. Have that hand you kind of grab it yeah and walks like there's like a downward point to it where it's like down into almost a valley is the staircase that you're on and at the bottom of this valley is or down for this bottom of the staircase is this person who's just there like shoulders broadened out yeah, apparently we were amicable with this person right you were incredibly amicable okay and that Hands up, just slowly start walking towards. Please wait. I need to know what you're doing here. I need to speak to whoever's in charge. The Adanatha is not available right now. The yeah, most important. I need to know what you're doing here, Runara. Please. The, um, the terrible's coming this way. I need to warn your people. My people are aware. That is why I am here. I got another step forward. Don't. Please. Please. Do not take another step. Please do not take another step. You need to let me pass. Make an inside check. Can I make it too? By all means. Alright. Do something. <laughs> I will say as well, this person is unarmed. Yeah, yeah. As you both, like, you both have this moment of, they're saying it with conviction, but they're not saying it as like a, I'm threatening you. This is someone who is pleading with you to not take another step. What's both of your passive perceptions, by the way? 16. Okay. Po, you you listen to that. And you can just see that their their eyes are not fully looking at Runara's eyes directly, but sometimes looking down at her chest. And that's where you see a single red bead right on her heart. Please do not take another step. What? I'm not a soldier. I find it very hard to be of a mindset to do what you need to do. 
I asked to be out here when we saw you coming. Because I know you've tried to help people. But, but there are people here. Okay. There are people here who are not willing to give you the chance to help because there's the chance you can do harm. And they are currently ready to hurt you. I cannot say how. I cannot confirm how many people there are. Because that is information I've been told I can't give. I mentally asked the moon, how many of them are there? There's this moment where you kind of like close your eyes and you ask the question. Your mind flashes three images. One is when you were very young starting this out. Feels like ages ago. And is that? Over the corpse of Venom Fang fighting a sniper. Then there is in a corridor in Yatar a figure talking directly to you. Oh shit. And the brute that he called away at that moment as well. They're the ones I see. But there's more. See. Okay, wait. The whole math of this <laughs> Ooh, hang on. <laughs> Okay. Um the very eye contact for second and looking up along the ridges and up on the ridges and the ways. Just try and see what anyone's going okay. to yeah. make a check for one of them. The others don't need to make them. Ooh. And then, and okay, give me a perception check then. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, one of them you don't get. And here's the issue. I'll say this above board: the one you don't get is the one that isn't invisible. Behind Jakas, you can just see this. You you more see dust kick up in two particular places. Like, very slightly, very, very faintly, very slowly. In the same way that you've seen, uh, like, in that way that an animal which is very big, moving very slowly and very deliberately would be. But it's broad and it's apart. There's two, like, spaces of dust that kick up. And the other one is the wind blows and there's just a moment where you just see a leaf touch onto a humanoid sized shoulder like you know kind of wrapping about like an arm before it floods away there are people behind jacas right now like close behind like, you get a sense that do, do distance sense, doesn't really i said do i get any sense of distances away from each other and away from trees or so it's kind of a small bit of like a croppy, stony clearing in this little area. It's kind of what you've realized. I'll give this to you. You're in a kill zone. A very deliberate kill zone. There's not a lot of trees to either side of you. They're like 30 foot, 30 foot away. And they're up and back, which is slower to get back up to. Um, you do also realize now that there's a red bead on your chest. But you cannot draw eye to whoever's put it on you. There is no flare of a lens. There's no indication of that at all. But you are aware of those. You that means that somebody with a dangerous weapon has an eye on you. I am going to walk directly behind Runara to the point where I can put my chin on her shoulder so I'm talking like directly into her ear mm -hmm. did we come here because we wanted them to kill us before we had to do this because that's where this is going Pass speaks again 
Whatever you have, you have to tell me. Please. Or walk away. I mean, we have... Got the bag of holding, and just drop it on the floor. Just tell him to run. You need to leave. You have to leave, all of you. Now. Then you did speak with her. Please, For many of us, this is our home. Actual soil we can till, we can live on. Renara, make me a persuasion check, please. Advantage for me. Just trying to the push help. the right words into, into her yeah, ear. Yeah, very literally, yeah. 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 I give advantage. 21. You know the, the plus 12 inspiration, is that to your own role or to any role made? I believe I had you guys write this down at the time. Oh, I've deleted off my front seat. So I, I, I believe you said it worked a bit like other inspirations in that you could either plus it to yourself or minus it from someone else. Yeah. Mm. Correct. Okay. So. Correct. That's how that works. Um. Thank you. As you're talking... There's this very sincere moment where it's clear that you're making a statement and a pleading statement. I'm begging you. An altruistic attempt. It is very clearly presented. But they're so can come on. Yeah. There's this moment where Jakasa stood there. And you can just feel for a moment, one of his shoulders kind of just like leans down a bit. And like you can actually see the imprint of fingers on it. As from his side, and now stood next to him, you can see that he's measurably taller, like probably like six and a half foot. Is a figure that you've previously spoken to, Poe. And you can't quite tell if he's drawing an eye to you or Renara. Like he did last time. But he stops and he's staring out towards. And this is Nulak. You. Okay. Okay. I can tell how this goes. An unfortunate way this goes, indeed. This is in full war plate. Helmet is slapped to the side. You're not even sure what's actually holding the helmet to the side, because his hands aren't on it. And it's not strapped. Arms full behind his back. This is not a call any of you or them looking to Chikas should have to make. I can tell when someone has been strong armed. And you, bear in mind, he's not speaking to you, Renara. You don't feel like he is. Know that I do not like it. When someone has to be forced, if you want to come and pick a fight, by all means do it of your own volition and I'll eagerly await you. 
but you're being forced to do something. And that is not something that the Gith tolerate. Even if it was for a deal, you never fully agreed to it, did you? Not with her. Would I be right in that? Speak. Is he looking at me when he's saying this, or, or is this he's looking, looking at to you? Yeah, he's looking towards both of you. But then there's this moment of a sharp. Be honest, speak fine line. Eye. At the moment, my head's literally on your shoulder. Yeah. You you both get the feeling of fuck. He's looking at me. I. I wish you were right. I wish I didn't really agree to it. Help you rebuild somewhere else, somewhere safer. Out of the view of the dragon. Hmm. That'll be my penance, what I have to do. No, you'll have your penance one day. But it won't be here. This is a moment where he starts walking towards you, and what you realize very quickly is that he has two swords on his back, and one you thought was on his back, on the center, and two on the shoulder. The one on the center floats off and sits on the, t the stonework next to him, and the other two float off and sit atop it. And he walks closer up towards you guys. Um, if he starts walking closer, I'll say what was said to us, don't take another step forward. I know there's no one behind that wall. It's just you two. Don't think so. You don't want to hurt us. But you are more than willing to come here. Hands I'll stretch with sincerity. That you are guilty. And you feel sick to your stomach for having agreed to it. If you're going to agree to something, have the spine to carry it out. I will drop my invisibility and my gift form. And I'll sort of just kind of appear, like, kind of like wrapped around Runar a little bit. And then just like look at him dead on the problem is not that we don't want to do this then we're not is? Problem is, we're willing to do this. And I'm begging you, all of you, to leave. And as she says leave, they'll sort of reverberate around and she'll try and command all the ones that she knows that are here to leave. I don't know if the invisible ones that I know are there count as being seen. Mm -hmm. If it does, I'll walk past it. I guess so. On the water leave. What's your DC? It's not high. It's sixteen. Um, okay. Do they have the um like Assassin's Creed sight and <laughs> you see someone throw a wall? <laughs> this thing's a wisdom save. Well, he'll have to use his legendary resistance on that. Just let me know how many I'm targeting. The cast so just rolled a natural twenty. So I know what spell slots to take off. Uh. I'm assuming. So you you know there's at least two. So you know there's three. I have to, be able to I technically have to, be able to see them. Okay. You know oh. there's another one there, but you can't see them. So, so two. I'm building these two. Okay. So second. Okay. Awesome. So 
He rolled. So Jakar's rolled a natural 20. Good. Okay. And Nulak used their legendary resistance. All right. Nulak's blade just, he sends out his hand and the blade just like floats towards it after you cast a spell on him. And in that second, the hand just grips his wrist and it's Jakas behind you, behind them. They're scared. They helped people where they didn't need to. And they helped me where they didn't need to. I did promise that paladin I really wanted to fight him. And Jukas speaks back. I don't care about that. Please. You know what we need to do anyway. We can just leave. You're welcome to stay if you want. We could always use a good fight to make it convincing. Nulak just looks towards you and goes, The issue of that is that if... If you're gonna fight, then I'm just gonna kill you both before you get back to your camp. Where's the fun in that? Who says it has to be fun? I intend to win. <laughs> None of this is fun. No, it's... Which, um, how could we do this or she does? Looking back to this guy of my shoulder. We're giving you a chance to get out alive. You and your children. This is moment when you say that that the nostrils flare. But give me an insight check. Move Jocasta here as well. When you say children, his eye does glance back at Jacas. To be clear, tell. that's the you reason we're even having this conversation. You could tell that the, the cogs are going in his head of he knows he can win this fight. He believes he can win this fight. But it's the issue the then comes... That he needs to win. Mm -hmm. The issue becomes as you said, but also you can just tell that he just like stops and he's just looking. He's not turning his eyes off of you make that very clear he does not take your eyes <laughs> off you but like he half like leans back towards it and towards you guys keeping you both kind of in his purview as he does it he looks back to Jakas with a finger extended as the blades float back onto his shoulder. Never ask me for anything ever again, boy. Never again, my child. Never again. You get one. That is it. One. And don't you ever say you are my child again. If you come before noon, I'll kill you all. I will kill you all. And then I'll go for her. 
the doors behind open out and that dot remains still on your chest for the bit but the invisibility drops and this hulking creature the ones that you've seen before this is the same one that was in Yatar. less less like a craggy exterior and more like as if the skin were more like smooth and obsidian like you do not believe they are any way less durable but they're more refined and they are looking at you with a predator's eye they're almost like punched like a like a large ape almost in that way of like how you'd picture an ape standing at usual is how they are but they are at a hunch doing so they pull themselves up and then they in a way it's almost as if somebody had turned gregor in their lycanthropic form to obsidian but gave them more of a humanoid face and they lean underneath the door frame to enter it and they stand at that doorway until jakasu's stood there for a moment and Nulak turns and walks back and steps in and is gone. And then the root follows and it is just Jakas again. You just see this like on the verge of their eyes, they're red. And their hands are like shaking. I wish you'd understand. And just runs back in. But they don't do their time super speed. It honestly is just what you realize. They're relatively very young. They're like will be the equivalent of in their late teens and they just run like a gangly teenager they stop this isn't what we came here to do so don't waste it come on She just, they just continue to run in. And that's where we're going to end the session. Ooh. Thank you all so much for watching, if indeed you still are. And we hope to see you next week for the next session of the Plight of Princes. Bye. Bye-bye.